Recordings in progress. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about today. For those of you that went to the production retreat in January or watched the replay in Jan uh, from the production retreat, oh, one little side note, if you haven't gotten the emails, this is the last week to be able to order the replay of the production retreat and watch it. It's not going to be available as of March 1st, so make sure you do that. Um, we had a, a couple people previously, and then also this week, asked if we had a company, if our company had a copy of the production retreat uh, replay. We uh, attempted to do that. Uh, Mr. Ferry was not having that idea <laughs> of us just buying one replay and giving it out to the company. He was not uh, not thrilled with that idea. So you're going to have to splurge and. Uh, you know, pay the money for yourself if you want the replay, but this is the last week. <clears throat> so anyways, one of the things that Mike talked about at the retreat, and he's talked about before, he mentioned at this time of leveling up, level up everything you're doing, which is another version of him saying all the time, upgrade, right? If you've been to any Mike Ferry retreats before, he says, upgrade everything, upgrade, 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 constantly upgrade. You know, Neil says, upgrade. We all say, upgrade, upgrade every, everything. So I got to thinking about upgrading and a thought came into my head is sometimes we don't upgrade because what is, when, when you hear the term upgrade, do you ever associate that with it's going to cost money? Yeah. I see a couple of you shaking your head. Okay. So I came to this thought, sometimes when we hear the word upgrade, we associate that with, well, it's going to cost me money, you know, because it could be, well, I got to upgrade my car. Okay. Well, that could, yes, that could cost money. I need to upgrade my suits. Yes, that could cost money. It seems like the thought process of the word upgrade is associated with it's going to cost me money. So what I did here... <clears throat> I came up with five things, five things here that if you want to take your business to another level, whatever level you're at, whether you're at zero starting out and you need to take it to level one, or you're at level 10, and as they say in spinal tap, you need to crank it to 11, okay, wherever level you're at, five things that you can upgrade that are not really going to cost you any money. So this is, this is kind of the basics of it. So let me, let's dive into this. You'll kind of see how this is gonna work. <clears throat> I didn't write these down in any particular order for any particular reason. This is just, as I was writing this out, this is how it all spewed out. So the first thing I wrote down upgrading is upgrading your skills, upgrading your skills. So the first question I wrote down here do you need to pay for access to scripts? So you don't need to pay for access to scripts. Do you need to pay someone to write scripts? No, there's already scripts written, whether you're following a Mike Ferry script, a Tom Ferry script. I mean, everyone's different, let's be honest. Or if you're following a Neil script, or if there's changes, typically Neil or I will, will write a script to do something. Okay. Do you need to pay someone to role play scripts? Okay, so so feel free to put in the chat box, shake your head, unmute yourselves, okay, get participation here. So you don't need to pay for access to scripts. You don't need to pay someone to write the scripts. You don't need to pay someone to role play the scripts. Therefore, your total cost for scripts is zero dollars. Okay, with me so far? Your total cost for scripts is zero dollars. So then I wrote down the question, okay, well, what is it worth? If you were to upgrade skills, taking the scripts, for example, what is that worth? So here's what I wrote down a scenario. If I gave you a script and I said, learn this script, learn this objection handler, and you just, okay, I'm going to 
figure out, I'm going to write it out, chant it out, role play it. I'm going to know it's so good. It's going to be upside down, left, right, inside out, whatever the case may be. I'm just going to have it at an A++ level. How many hours or how many days would it take you to get that script at a really high level? Give me an example. Anyone want to give me an example? Let's say, for example, I said, get the expired objection handler of we've already interviewed other agents. How, how long would it take you to really get that script down at a really high level? Chris says a week. What else? A month. A month, okay. Right, so a month, a week. Any other thoughts? Okay. A month. A week. A month, week, okay. One hour yeah. a day practice. One hour a day? Okay. Practice. One hour a day practice, right. Okay. So so would you agree that somewhere, if you were to role play 30 or um, 30 minutes to an hour a day, somewhere between 10 to 20 hours of practice would get you that script down at a really high level? Is that kind of what we're all saying here with a week, a month, something like that? Okay. Yes. Okay. So now let's so now let's do this. If you were to contact five expired a day over 200 days, that would be 1000 expired contacts over the course of the year. If you contacted 1000 expireds, how many times would you get the objection of we've already chosen an agent? Would that be 10% of the time, 20% of the time, 30%, 5%? How, how often do you think you would get the objection of we've already chosen an agent? Maybe 30. 30%? Anyone else want to take a guess or give a thought? Not a guess, give a thought. Does anyone else care? Am I talking to three people? Let's say 20, I don't know. 20%, like okay, great. 30%, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry, so ask me between, a question again. If you contacted 1,000 expired listings over the course of the year, how many or what percentage would say we've already, entered, we've already chosen an agent? Well, if you have them on the line long enough before they hang up on you, I would imagine 50% would say we already have an agent. Okay. Okay, so, so I hear anywhere from 20 to 50 is kind of thoughts. Thank you so much for participating. Okay, so let's, I don't know, let's go in the middle. Let's just say 30%. So if I contacted 1,000, okay, 1,000 expired and 30% said that they already picked an agent, that's 300 times that somebody would tell me that they already had an agent. So now... If I went back to that objection handler, and I, again, I spent the 10, 20 hours of practice on that objection handler, you already had an agent. Is it possible that I could convert some of those 300 people to an appointment? Could I do 5% of those, 10% of those, 1% of those? If I knew the objection handler at a really high level, the best level possible, could I, could I get... What do you think? 50 30%. 50. 50%? 30. 30%? Okay. I'll go conservative and I'll say 10%. Okay. 10%. So that would be 30 listing appointments. Now, if I went on 30 listing appointments, if I set 30 listing appointments with an expired, let's just say half of them showed up. Right. So I went on 15 actual appointments. Could I get how many of those 15 could I get a listing with? Five, 10, eight, seven. What do you think? Half? 10. 10. Okay. Seven. Seven. All right. Again, we'll be conservative and say seven. So you took seven listings. And let's just say because it's an expired, one of them was really overpriced. Let's just say, you know, one of them was a really overpriced. Two of them were really overpriced in itself. So you ended up selling five. 
Okay. So we narrow this down to you got five listings closed. Now, the average commission in the company right now is about 14,000. Now, yours might be higher, yours might be lower, but let's just take 14,000 times five. That's $70,000 in commission. Okay. $70,000 in commission. And we agree that it was going to take 10 to 20 hours to get that script really great, right? So let's just say it was 20 hours, $70,000 divided by 20, that's $3,500 an hour. Would you be okay making $3,500 an hour? It'd be a pretty good job, right? Yes. I'm telling you right now, if somebody offered me $3,500 an hour, you would never see me ever again. I would never be on Zoom for Century 21 Masters ever again. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you. I'll send you a nice letter, but you don't won't so, see me. Don't be so honest, Robert. <laughs> so we got through this, right? So we figured out the total cost of the scripts is zero dollars. But what's it worth? Well, you know, maybe you know, we, we've narrowed it down to three thousand five hundred dollars an hour in that scenario. But that's what it's worth for zero dollars. You don't have to pay for the scripts. You don't have to pay for someone to write the scripts. You don't have to pay for anyone to role play the scripts zero dollars to upgrade your skills and that's what it could be worth does that make sense to everybody how we just got there so the question you have to write you ask yourself is what am i going to do to upgrade my skills it's not going to cost me any money but it's worth a fortune so I wrote down a couple of thoughts here. So just a couple of thoughts. We're not going to spend too much time on the, the how to upgrade and how to upgrade your skills. I wrote down here, pick some scripts that you are honestly going to use and take 30 minutes, an hour a day and get them down to an A plus level. <clears throat> Don't be, this is what I wrote down here. Don't be kind of good at a lot of scripts. Be really great at a couple scripts. That's upgrading. Okay. Robert, I've done the just listed script for 25 years. Okay, great. Let's role play it. And then we'll find out if you're at A plus or still at a B. I've been calling expireds for 15 years. Okay, let's role play it. Let's find out if you're at an A plus or a B. You might be at an A plus. I'm not saying you're not. But you might be at a B and you just haven't upgraded in 25 years. Take the scripts that you're going to use to an A plus level. I also wrote down here on how to upgrade. Don't, don't think one script is harder or more important than the others. Well, it's just a just listed script. How hard is that? Okay. How about this? We'll take, <clears throat> you go do a just listed script. Okay. You go do a just listed script for 400 people and Karen Bernardio go do a just list of script for 400 people. And let's see if the results are the same. Don't make one script more important than the others. <clears throat> so skills, upgrade your skills, take it to the next level. Okay, second thing I wrote down here, market knowledge. We're upgrading market knowledge. So we're gonna play the same game. You have to pay your MLS dues, right? To get access to the MLS, you need to pay your MLS dues. Okay. I can't do anything about that. Sorry. <laughs> this is one of this. Do you need to pay additional fees to go preview homes? No. Okay. Do you need to pay additional fees for things like InfoSparks or whatever other services you might have? Nope. That's all part of the MLS dues. Do you need, you know, we do these county reports. If you work for our organization, we do these county reports every month. Do you pay for those? No. Okay. I spend countless hours on those. So you don't need to pay for preview homes. You don't need to pay for info sparks. You don't need to pay for county reports. Okay. So your total cost to upgrade your market knowledge is just your MLS dues. That's it. There's no additional cost to it. How much are your MLS dues? Give me, give me an example. How much a year do you pay in MLS dues? Thousand. Thousand bucks. Okay. So let's call it, you have to pay the thousand, but there's no additional fees. 
So now let me ask you this. So what's it worth? Have you ever heard a seller say they want to go with the local knowledgeable real estate agent? Have you ever heard a seller say that? I want to work with the, the local expert. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you took your market knowledge and you upgraded, or as Mike said, this year level up, if you took that to another level, could that help you save at least one listing for someone who says they want to work with the local expert? Okay. So if that helped you save one deal, one deal, and your average commission is ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, you just, by upgrading your market knowledge to be what is deemed the local expert, it costs you $0 and you just increased at least fourteen, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So you have to then take your market knowledge to another level. Here's what I wrote down on how to upgrade your market knowledge. Spend five minutes a day, go into the MLS and figure out what's going on in your marketplace. If you spend five minutes a day, you could get away with it. If you don't spend five minutes a day, then you need to spend an hour or so a week. But spend five minutes a day, go in, what's listed, what's pending, what's sold, what's expired, what's canceled, what's the price per square footage, Know what's going on. Spend a little bit of time each week figuring out what's going on in the community. Is there a new thing being built? Is there something being torn down? Is there a law going into place that could have some effects? Spend a little bit of time. Don't have to spend a lot, but upgrade it to where when somebody says, I want to work with a local market expert, they would be stupid not to work with you. That's the kind of upgrade to where it's not even a comparison. Here's what I wrote down. Make it to where there's not even a comparison to where they can't say, well, I don't know, that other agent's pretty close in market knowledge. No, you have to be able to beat that. There's not even close. It's not even close. Okay. Be that. Spend time every single day going into the MLS, figuring out, go into InfoSpark. So if you don't have InfoSpark, some of you are out of the area, figure out whatever it is in your MLS that gives you graphs, charts, stats, do those types of things. Figure out what's going on in the community. Hey, Robert. Yes. Yeah, I just want to just uh, make a comment about what you said. I, I think it's about perception. Uh, I heard before they said that when nothing costs you, uh, it's free. Usually we just give it for, you know, granted and we don't put a lot of effort, but realistically sure. every, every, everything costs. Like I said, when you said the info sparks or whatever, if you put in our mind, we are paying a thousand dollars and that is part of the thousand dollars. And instead of thinking that it's free, I say, yeah, you're paying a thousand dollars. Why don't you use it? Because yeah. it's costing you the money. Now you said for the company. Yeah, sure. The, Neil doesn't charge us, but if you put it in your mind, I'm paying my side or whatever percentage, that is part of my business. You thinking it's not free. You have to work for it. So then you have to do something in order to earn it. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess because if you think it's free, people say, oh, it's free. It's like, a, you know, I don't have to do it. No, you're 100% right. That's exactly why when people say, hey, I get coaching at Century 21 Masters. Should I also get outside coaching? Neil and I always encourage it. Not because we don't think we're great coaches internally, but the truth is there are some things that when you're paying $1,000 a month, you might listen to that coach a little bit more. Just a fact it is what it is. We don't take it personal, but Michael's 100% right. So upgrade your market knowledge, but I wrote down here under market knowledge, just because you've worked that market for 20 years doesn't mean you're up to date on the market knowledge. Just because you live in an area doesn't mean you're a market expert. Okay. I'll be honest with you, where I live, I'm not a market expert, okay? I just, I just don't know. But just because you live there doesn't mean you're a market expert, okay? Be the times change, things change. Be a market expert every day. Spend five minutes a day. Go into the reports, know what's going on. Ask questions, figure it out. When you're driving around, look at what's being built, what's vacant, what's happening. Be that market expert to where they, you can just knock their socks off. All right, I wrote down here number three, accountability. Upgrade accountability. Okay, same thing. Three basic questions. 
do you need to pay for accountability partners? No. Do you need to pay to create a business plan? No. Do you need to pay to set goals? No. So therefore the total cost of accountability is again, zero dollars. Zero dollars for accountability. But what's it worth? So let me ask you this. For those of you that do open mic, have you ever done open mic and pushed a little bit harder to get an appointment? Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Why? It's because you have that accountability. I'm on open mic. I'm accountable, right? Have you ever, when you've done open mic, make sure that you're calling people that are going to answer because you don't want to be silent for 30 minutes? Yeah. I'm afraid actually when I say that question, because some of you might be doing the exact opposite. You kidding me, Robert? I'm calm hand dialing with numbers that are 10 years old. So nobody answers. <laughs> no, but you get the bet. No, no, all right. I got my dialer up and ready or I'm calling past clients and calling for my cell phone because I, I don't want to do it. That's the accountability. So you push a little bit more. You make a few extra contacts because you have that accountability to the group. So how much is that accountability worth? Take give you another example. So Jack had set up some great accountability at the end of the year. Um, and there was a penalty. Now there's a, there was a penalty to pay money if he didn't do it, okay? But to do it, to do the actual accountability group didn't cost any money. And part of what he had to do for the, for, for the fourth quarter was every working day he had, or every working week, he had to make 150 contacts or set three listing appointments. It was one or the other, okay? And so he, uh, there was a day in January, we were having a call and he said, um, you know, I made my, got my 150 contacts. He said, but I'll tell you right now, Robert, um, he said, after Wednesday, I just, I just wasn't really feeling like working, you know, which happens, okay? And he said, and I'll tell you, if it wasn't for my accountability group, I would have, I would have just stopped working after Wednesday and I'd have finished the week with about 60 contacts. He said, absolutely would have done it. No, no offense about it because of the accountability group, I finished the week with 150 contacts ended up setting two listing appointments and, and went on from there. He January. So December was his, was his biggest month he's ever done. This is a guy that's been a 300, $400,000 GCI guy for a number of years. December was the biggest month he ever did only to be followed by January, which blew that out of the water. And he would come on here right now and tell, tell you it's because of that accountability that he had for that fourth quarter that he had to make a certain number of contacts or set the appointments. And we have story after story beyond that, behind that. So how much is, is that worth? What's it worth? So let me ask you, that extra push from an accountability partner, that extra push from open mic, could it help you push to find one more deal a year? Could accountability partners, if you really did it, could it help you get one more deal a year? Yes, yes. 100%. Okay, so what's up? 10, 15, 20 grand again for $0. So, so far it cost you, we've gone through this, $0 to upgrade your skills on the scripts, which could be worth thousands of dollars an hour. It costs you nothing except your MLS dues, so no additional money to inc upgrade your market knowledge, which could be worth at least winning over one more listing, which is 10, 15, 20 grand. There's no cost for accountability to upgrade your accountability, which could be worth another 10, 15, 20 grand. So, so far we've spent no extra money, but we've increased our profits thousands, tens of thousands of dollars so far, just by upgrading, it's taken from a different mindset. So upgrade your accountability. How do you do that? Well, one, find some accountability partners, okay? It shouldn't be that hard if you really go and ask people, hey, can we be some accountability partners? Sometimes you might only need one accountability partner. You don't need 10 accountability partners. If you have them, great, because I know people that have groups, there's 10, 15, 25 people in there. That's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't have one, get one. 
Start with that. Go from there. Find an accountability partner. Hold yourself accountable to things that you can actually be accountable for. Don't, okay, I have an accountability partner. Here's 15 things I'm going to do this week. Unless you've been in an accountability group before, you're never going to do, do all 15 things. Okay. Start with one thing. Okay. My, here's my accountability. I have to do this, blah, blah, blah. Build up from there. Okay. And then when you have an accountability partner, this is the key. You have to have an accountability partner that will hold you accountable. You. <laughs> you know, you can't have an accountability partner when you say, Hey, did you get your, did you make your contacts today? No, I didn't. Oh, don't worry about it. You'll get it tomorrow. Now you don't have to be mean about it. Like what the hell is wrong with you? I can't believe this. Here's, you want to know, you want to know what the best thing an accountability partner can do? It's the best thing an accountability partner can do is say, well, why didn't you do it? Force you to come up with some lame excuse. To hear yourself. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Matab, Matab's right. Just to hear yourself. It's the shittiest feeling in the world. <laughs> it's the worst. It's the worst. You know you're lying to yourself. <laughs> did you hit 30 contacts today? No, I didn't. Well, why not? Well, because, and then you have to come up with something. And yeah. to Todd's point, it's the worst feeling. That's the best accountability partner. If they'll just make you, they'll just ask why. Why didn't you do it? Make you come up with some excuse. And also when they have collected my money and purchased something, I hate yeah. them for it. There you go. There you go. Hey, Robert. Yes. Is, is that the answer? Remember last year or a couple of years, we were going to Vegas for the prospecting school for three days and all the agents going there. They, they set a record number of appointments that if they work in their offices, they might not get in it. But in those three days with my ferry prospecting school, everybody's getting records. I don't know if you went there. But uh, yeah, the, the, the reason for that, Michael, is that when you go to the prospecting clinic, they take away your phone and you're not allowed to do anything else. So all you have to do is prospect, number one. Number two, there's somebody listening to your call. So much like the open mic, you're pushing a little bit more and because you're in Mike Ferry's office, you tend to follow the scripts more. So you have no phone access, you have no email access, all you're doing is prospecting, you have somebody listening to your calls, giving you feedback for help, but also making you push a little bit more and you follow the scripts more often. So because of, and you're surrounded by people doing the exact same thing. So because of that, yeah, you're going to always do more, whereas, when you go to the office, as great as we are, and I think our office and our Zoom people, I think we're as great as anyone out there. But as great as we are, you go to the office, you still have your cell phone, you still have your email, you still have creative avoidance as much as you want, right? You cannot follow the scripts if you don't want to. And it's like, all right, do what you want. So that's why. That's why. Okay, two more things I wrote down here, okay? Fourth thing I wrote down here is upgrading your mindset. Upgrading your mindset. So we've upgraded skills, we've upgraded market knowledge, we've upgraded accountability. Now we're gonna upgrade the mindset. Or again, as Mike Ferry said, the production retreat level up. Okay, so again, okay, I, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna go through this and, and you don't have to answer, you don't want to because you're kind of getting the gist of this, but this is what I wrote down. Do you need to pay to join a mastermind group? Typically not, okay? Do you need to pay to join our virtual office? Do we charge you to be here? No. Should we? That's a different topic. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, right? So you don't need to pay to join a mastermind group. You don't need to pay to join this virtual office that we have here. Do you need to pay for YouTube? No. Do you need to pay for affirmations? No. So again, the total cost to upgrade your mindset is zero. Now, I, I put a little asterisk here because some people do, do pay for um, therapy and things along those lines. You do, you do what's you, okay? But for the basics, to upgrade your mindset would be no cost. So then I wrote down what's it worth? So here's the question I asked everybody. Are there people that you've met in your life that you don't want to do business with or don't want to be around because they're negative? 
Are there, have you met people in your life that you don't want anything to do with because they're negative? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. They're out of my life. hundred percent. hundred percent. hundred percent. And are there people in your life that you do want to be around or do want to be with simply because they're positive and energetic? Yes. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Otherwise, yes. otherwise you're never going to listen to me. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I'm the most positive, energetic guy around. So if you don't want to be around people like that, well, boy, well, I'm in trouble. Okay. So now, okay. So then let's, how, what's it worth? What is it worth? Do you think sellers or buyers, do you think they feel the same way? Do you think yes. they, yes. People would, they off turn, would they turn down an agent because they think, I don't want to be around somebody with that kind of mindset. Do you think sellers turn people down like that? Buyers turn people down like that? People feed off of energy. There it is. So you ask yourself, what's it worth to upgrade the mindset? Well, if it's going to help you get a deal, what's that worth? Could it help you save a deal with a seller simply because, God, they're so positive. They're energetic. I want to be around those people versus this person brings me down. I don't want to be an escrow in a listing with somebody like that. So that's what another 10, 15, 20 grand. Just if, you, if, it, if it only helped you save one deal, if it all came down to they're the same company, it's the same commission, they offer the same price. But this one just had a better mindset, better outlook on things. It's another ten, twenty, fifteen thousand dollar upgrade that costs zero dollars. So the last one I wrote down here is goals. Upgrade your goals. Upgrade your goals. So again, same theory applies here. I did the same thing with all all of these thoughts. Do you need to pay? To dream big. Do you need to pay to think big? No, no. Do you need to pay to want more? No. Do you need to pay to write out your goals, to have a vision board? No. So therefore, the total cost of upgrading your goals is, again, $0. But I wrote down here, what's it worth? It's priceless, endless. Because I remember Mike Ferry saying one time, the biggest issue real estate agents have is their inability to think big enough. Or a, a quote that I like, the issue is not that you set your goals so high and don't reach them. The issue is that you set your goals too low and reach them. See, when we don't dream bigger, when we don't think bigger, when we don't want more, when we don't upgrade our goals to bigger things and we keep the goals at a lower level, you hit them, and then what do most, maybe not you, don't actually, don't answer this because this might not be you, but when most people hit their goals, they stop. They stop. I've reached my goals, and they take the, as Neil Schwartz would say, that proverbial side, the, <sighs> which is the kiss of death. Because then the complacency sets in, you're good, and there's just so much more out there. So much more out there. So by not upgrading your goals, it's costing you a fortune because you're not pushing yourself. You're not looking at what else is out there. The line that I always use, you're thinking local, not global. Dream bigger, want bigger, think bigger, go bigger. So how do you upgrade that? Well, you start really thinking about things that you'd like to have, places you want to go. Just start writing them out. Don't think about it. Just start writing. 
where would you want to go? Well, you know, I'd want to go here, 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 here. Don't think about how to get there. Don't think about how much it's going to cost. Don't think about when I want to go here, here. What do you want to have? Don't think about how much it's going to cost. Don't think about the process. Just what do you want to have? What would you like to do? And just start writing about 10, 15, 20 things. Then at the end of that, then you look at that and go, okay, wow. I just figured out five places I would love to go. Okay. Now let's figure out how do you get there? God, I'd love to go to Greece. Pfft, wouldn't. Make a nose. You kidding me? Santorini? Come on. Let's figure out how to get there. Okay. I really want, gosh, I've always had the dream of owning a Lamborghini. Okay. Let's figure out how to get it. But when you don't write it out, when you don't just write and you think about it, then it, it slows you down. Because then you think about, well, what do I want to have? Well, gosh, I mean, I've always wanted a Lamborghini, but gosh, that's going to be like this. I couldn't picture myself spending two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars on a car. Plus, I mean, where am I going to drive this Lamborghini? I can't go. Like, you're going to think about it too much, and you're holding yourself back because you're not just letting your emotions take over and letting your dreams take over of what you want. It's costing you a fortune. It's costing you a fortune. And it's zero dollars to upgrade. So to recap here, we went over upgrading or leveling up, whatever term you want to use, your skills, your market knowledge, your accountability, your mindset, and your goals, all of which cost zero dollars to upgrade. And we figured out that it could get you tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in return. And all you have to do is upgrade those five things. I didn't put in there, upgrade your CRM, upgrade your social media marketing, upgrade, you know, da, da, da. Upgrade your car, upgrade this. I didn't put any of that. Your skills, your market knowledge, your accountability, your mindset, and your goals. Upgrade those five things at no money. And if you upgraded nothing else, you'd make tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars more. If you then also upgrade some of these other things, that's bonus. Start with these five. Can you repeat them again? Skills, market knowledge, accountability, mindset, goals. Upgrade those five things. They're free to do it. Stop spending that one more time. Sorry. What's that? Thank you. Can you one more time. Yes, I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm gonna share. You're gonna share them. I'm gonna share. I'm just gonna share the notes. Yeah. I'm gonna share my notes. Oops, wrong one. Questions on any of the stuff we went over today? Stop spending money upgrading things until you've upgraded the free ones. You don't need to upgrade your CRM if you don't have enough clients to put in it to begin with. You don't need to upgrade your social media marketing if you don't know what to say if somebody calls you off of it. I've spent all this money on social media marketing and then somebody calls you and you go, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> damn it. I spent all this money on marketing. They called me and I didn't know what to say. <laughs> okay. Upgrade the free stuff. All right. Questions on anything? Thoughts, comments, concerns, hallucinations? Okay. 100% an eye opener, probably. Cool. A great, a great reminder of not overthinking things and just, there you go. just doing it day by day. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. I appreciate uh, Robert. Yes, Michael. 
No, I'm just saying maybe <clears throat> maybe in another class you can explain. I, mean, I know it's easy to say I want to get a Lamborghini or I want to live by the beach or I want to just do this, which is fine. That would be part of our, 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 our dream board. But to make to that step, and you explained it, I think, before when uh, uh, Ed Kaminsky, he was uh, selling houses in Torrance and he was not happy there, but then he moved to the beach and then his life changed because he was actually there. And whatever he was planning, he saw it there. I'm going to live here. I'm going to buy with my business here. So I think that will help sometimes. You got to do something in order to get closer to whatever you want and not just dream it. I don't know. What, what do you think? No, it's a great idea. Great idea. We, we talk about that. Um, what the hell am I talking about tomorrow? Oh, well, Robert, hey, Mike Ferry, uh, coaching. You know, a goal without a deadline is just a dream. Yeah. That's you have a- to put that timeline in order for it to be effective. Yep. That's right? huge. Dream boards are great, but dream boards typically don't have dates on them. But uh, when you write your goals down, you got to put those dates down. That's it. No, hundred percent. That is a great, it's a great, great line. Thank you, Fred. Yes, Michael, I will talk about that. I'll put actually, you know what? I haven't done next week's calendar yet. I'll do that maybe Monday next week. We could talk about that stuff. Yeah. I'll put that in for next week. More about accountability partners too. Accountability partners? Yeah. Like you need an accountability partner? Yep. Sam needs an accountability partner. Sam, put your contact information in the chat box. And if nobody contacts Sam, this is a sad day. So Sam, put your contact information in the chat box. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Very good. All right. Well, hopefully this is helpful. As I say all the time, if there's things that we can go over more of, if there's things that we're going over that aren't very helpful, please let us know. I say this, I got thick skin, but I say this because I spend time <laughs> putting, like coming up with these classes and these thoughts and things like that. So I, if it's not helpful, you know, send me a message and say, hey, look, I think we've kind of got the gist on that. So let's work on something else. Okay. So I can spend my time on doing other things, but if it is helpful, then that's fine too. All right, everybody. Good stuff. Way to go. Let's keep up the great work.